Welcome back. We're at the farm. While we're at the farm, let me ask a question. Do you like background music in these videos or not? The last video I made didn't have background music, and this one won't as well. I don't know how people feel about it. I personally like the background music in some scenarios. RuneScape has a lot of good music, specifically Harmony, Carnelian Rising, Background. Those are all good songs. But I don't know if I want them in the videos every single time. So let me know. Anyway, we're at our player-owned farm, and I just wanted to show you that our level is getting higher and higher. And we were raising sheep, since they give more XP, instead of chickens and rabbits. But we really want to get 54. That's our focus. Chinchompas are great. Sea Slug is a great quest to do because it has very low requirements, but also gives quite a good amount of XP. This is one of the reasons why we wanted to train fire making in the last episode, was so we can get 30, so we could do Sea Slug and get 7,000 fishing XP. We haven't been training fishing, so the 7,000 XP will be significant. So when we finish the quest, the 7,000 XP, I think that puts us at like 20-something. I have a medium clue scroll that I want to do, but we have to go towards the Nature Spirits Grotto, so I figured since we're going there anyway, let's do the quest. This is a quest I have mixed feelings about, because I remember having to leave and come back to Mauritania multiple times while doing the quest. It was pretty annoying, but not as annoying as this garbage clue scroll. Oh well. We finished the quest, get a little bit of XP, and now we have access to the altar, which we'll pray at, because that is a requirement for the easy Mauritania diary. Next up is Shades of Morton. Since we're here, we might as well do it, right? But here's a little tip. Make sure you keep the diary that you get during the quest, because you can take that diary to the Varrock Apothecary and get a little bit of Herblar XP. It's also a requirement for the Loremaster achievement, which if you're going for that, don't forget it. We finish the quest, get a little bit of XP, easy quest, easy time. And here we are taking the diary to the Apothecary. I think we got about 375 Herblore XP. It's not a lot, but it's better than nothing. And it doesn't count as a reward or an XP lamp, so it uses up some of your bonus XP if you have some. We finally got around to doing the God Statues. This is a monthly D&D, if you're not aware of it, of Distractions and Diversions. That gives you Construction XP and Prayer or Slayer XP. I'm going with Prayer this time around because Prayer is a little more expensive. Here's a little secret. If you spam click the complete button, it'll tell you which scaffoldings are too tall or too short, and you can change it immediately instead of having to go one at a time. And this is the cutscene, which you can't skip the first time around, I don't believe. But there's a little button that allows you to skip it for all future constructions of the statue. Merlin's Crystal is a very important quest because it leads up to other quests that are very significant, such as the ones that unlock piety and chivalry. But most importantly, it gives us six quest points. We want those quest points. And don't forget to buy yourself a fork candle. Strange women lying in pawns distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. So we finish up Merlin's Crystal, get the six quest points, which is a hefty amount of quest points, which would be great for Maze Caravan. And we can also get five kudos and a 1,000 XP lamp from the museum. Next up is Holy Grail. This quest gives a ton of experience. 15,000 defense experience and 11,000 prayer experience. Definitely worthwhile, and it's probably a quest a lot of people do as soon as they can. We kill the Black Knight Titan, forget to use Excalibur, so we kill him again, use Excalibur, and then we win. You know, there was a time where you would use the Fisher King realm as a method of mining gold. You would mine the gold in Karamja and go to the Fisher King realm, use the Fairy Ring, and bank in Zanaris. It was very tedious, but that's what we did. Ooh, Maze Caravan. We got 75 quest points. What are we going to get? So first we get the Helm of Trials, because that's one of the unlocks we get just naturally. But then we get one of the die, and we're going to throw the die, and hopefully we get something good. Hopefully we don't get a Gilded item, because those things don't give fortunate components for some reason, some inexplicable reason. And we get H4 Leggings. Fortunate component, that's worth a mil. Fantastic. Don't forget to do your caches. This cache gave us one of the divination outfit pieces. Please clap. We want to do Horror from the Deep, but we have to do the Bar Crawl mini quest first. This is the quest where you go to a bunch of different bars around Gaelinor and drink until your liver don't work no more. So we finished it, and now we can go ahead and do Horror from the Deep. This is 
dreadful. I already fell off of this three times, and then I started recording to see how many more times I'd fall off of it. Let's just watch in silence, won't we? Alright, so we finally made it across and we start Horror from the Deep. We have all the items with us, so we're going to do it really quick. Unfortunately, there's a point where you have to go across the basalt rocks again. Let's see how many times it takes this time around. Wow. One try. I am shocked. So the Dagonoth Mother fight wasn't too difficult. It was just a little issue with accuracy and... Switching spells in RuneScape sucks because you have to click like 15 times because the game doesn't register the actual spell being clicked if you're auto-attacking or something weird. And They just need to fix the awkwardness in combat, the unresponsiveness in combat. It's the primary reason why I never really did PVM on my main. Either way, we finish the quest and we get to choose one of the god books. We decide to choose the Zamorakian god book, specifically because it is the cheapest of the god books to fill. Which is really strange, because I remember a time when it was the most expensive god book to fill. Times sure do change. We want to do this because the filled god book gives a slight combat boost, and it's a pocket slot item, so it doesn't really take up space in our paper doll. We basically had nothing in our pocket slot so far, so we might as well get something that could fill it. When we get 60 crafting and 60 prayer, we can upgrade it into an illuminated god book following the one piercing note quest, and it'll make it an even better item. Moving on to the dig site. This is quite a classic quest, leads up to the Temple of Sintistan at a later date. My biggest criticism of the quest is that you can do it after you start training archaeology. I think, effectively, you could have 120 archaeology and never have done dig site. So you never actually get the correct qualifications to work at the dig site, even though you're a master of archaeology. I know they want things to be more accessible to the players so they don't have to lock skills behind quests and such which is why they changed up wolf whistle and druidic ritual so you don't need to do those quests to train summoning an herbalor but it really messes with some things you you shouldn't be able to do archaeology without having done the dig site quest or at the very least they should have changed the dig site quest up a bit so if you are already well versed in archaeology then it wouldn't take that long to do the quest or maybe they should have replaced Dig Site with a new quest that incorporated the archaeology tutorial into it. That way, both things can occur at the same time. So you have to do the archaeology tutorial to start archaeology anyway, so maybe the Dig Site quest could be the new archaeology tutorial. I don't know why they didn't change it. Maybe they thought the Dig Site quest was too iconic to get rid of. Either way, 15,300 mining XP and a little bit of herbal XP, that's fantastic. Now I think it's time we train herb lore. We got some Harlander, we got some chocolate dust, we got some water-filled vials. We're going to make some energy potions and hopefully get up to about level 30, 31-ish, maybe around there. And then maybe we could do Edgar's Ruse in the future. Elemental Workshop 3. Oh my god, this quest was annoying. So, you know, you do that intro part, you know, from Elemental Workshop 2 where you got to prime the bars and, you know, put them on the conveyor belt and dunk them in the lava flatten them, cool them, fan them, you know, take them off, do all that stuff. All that normal stuff you do. But let's see if you can detect where I went wrong. Do you see it? Did you see the problem? I primed the bars in the thing from Elemental Workshop too. I wasn't supposed to do that. So after I solved this puzzle, after I solved this really long, really annoying puzzle, I go to prime the new bars. Okay. Let's put a bar in the slot. Why is it working? What's going on? Oh, this this bar is already pulsing with power. It's it's already been primed. I I I I I need to make two new bars. I need to make two new bars. So I made two new bars. <laughs> and I came back. Unfortunately I didn't have to redo the puzzle. Came back, push the button, flip the switch, get two bars, make the body body, and we're done. I want to train fishing, but I don't want to train fishing too much until we have an aquarium in the house, which requires 63 construction. So we're going to use construction contracts, which were released rather recently and are a very effective way of training construction without using a lot of materials. Basically, you get a contract. It's kind of like mahogany homes from old school. 
you get a contract, you go to a place, you build a bunch of furniture, and then you get a little bit of a bonus XP from it. And there's also currency that you can use to buy stuff, but that takes a long time to get. Right now we're doing some lower level stuff, but we'll build up to Teak at level 60, and then we'll get to level 63 after that. Or maybe we'll stop at 60 and, I don't know, go do some other stuff for a bit. So I got level 50, but then I realized there was another quest we can do to get the Crystal Saw. Perhaps we should do the Eyes of Gluffrey, get the Crystal Saw, have a plus three boost, and then we won't have to get to level 63 to build the aquarium. Ah, that would be very smart. Unfortunately, I was mistaken. You can't use the Crystal Saw to boost to build rooms. But we're still going to do the Eyes of Gluffrey because I didn't realize that until after I did the quest. Now here's a little trick if you're doing the quest yourself right now. When you talk to Brimstale and you get those little coin token things, drop them, get more, keep dropping them, keep getting more, so you can have a variety of them instead of having to use that machine to exchange them. You're probably still going to have to exchange them so you can get exact numbers, but this speeds it up a little bit so you don't have to do as much thinking, because what if you get lucky and you get all the pieces you need? Great. Quest is even easier. As I was finishing up the quest, the quest guide told me to go talk to King Narnode, and when I went to talk to him, he gave me the quest for Monkey Madness. So we're going to grab that, and perhaps we'll do it in the next video. But it was strange. I thought that I was supposed to speak to him. Turns out I forgot to do a step. So after I pick up this quest, I go back and do the step. And then I finish up by killing all those little cute animals. But it's okay, because they were actually spies. So now that they're dead, we finish up the quest. We get the crystal saw. But it won't do what we want it to do. We're still going to have to get 63 so we can build an aquarium. Oh well. I think that's enough quests for today. So we got 42 farming, which means we can raise frogs at the ranch out of time. Each frog gives about 5,000 XP when they reach Elder, and they reach Elder rather quickly. They also give poisonous slime. All six together when they reach Elder will give 270 poisonous slime, which sell in total for about 50k. We definitely want to save up some beans, though, so we can have our animals breed in the small pen. Right now we can buy frogs off the Grand Exchange for about 15k each, or we could buy them for 100 each from... The farmer's market. I'd rather save the beans, so we're going to buy frogs from the Grand Exchange and raise them that way. The poisonous slime kind of balances out the cost. So here's where our stats are looking at the end of this episode. We're making some pretty good progress. We're almost at 1,000 total. I don't know what we're going to do next. We're probably going to do more quests. We're definitely going to do Monkey Madness in the next episode. And I'll probably use the XP on defense and attack. Definitely attack. So with that, thank you for watching. Take care.